Hi, my name's Paul Levy and I'm going to speak to you today on the greatest invitation that you will ever hear. Let me read it to you. It's from Jesus of Nazareth and he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. They're comfortable words, aren't they? Now, one of the things that you always do when you get an invitation is you need to check who it's from. And what I want us to see is I want us to see a number of paradoxes in this passage. So first of all, see that this invitation that you're given by Jesus of Nazareth is from the master who is slave. From the master who is slave. Look what it says. It says, come to me for I am gentle and humble in heart. Those words are servant words, aren't they? This invitation is from somebody with a servant heart. It's not from a tyrant. It's from somebody who's got your best interest in heart. He's gentle and humble. And these words reveal to you the heart of Jesus. It's a servant heart. But when you look at the context, when you look at the verses around this invitation, there's a paradox. So in verse 27, it says, All things have been given to me by my Father. This invitation comes, I'm gentle, I'm humble in heart. And the verse before it says, all things have been given to me. So here's somebody with a servant heart who's humble and gentle, and yet they claim to be the master of the universe and the Lord of all. So that's where we are, friends. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 27. He's the master of the universe. He's the Lord of all. And it's a huge paradox, isn't it? But it's the paradox of Christianity. A lot of people think Christianity is all about serving God And it is in a sense, but before it's us serving God, it's God serving us. The cross is at the heart of Christianity. So Philippians 2 tells us about Jesus Christ, who did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the nature of a servant and being made in likeness as man, and humbled himself to death, to death on a cross. This Lord of all who did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, has made himself the servant of all. And that is the person who sends you and me the invitation. So let's explore this paradox. Jesus is presenting himself, isn't he, in verse 28 of Matthew chapter 11, as this great burden bearer. It's a global invitation, so it's bigger than you and me. It's a great global invitation. Jesus is inviting everyone to come to him with their problems. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Here is Jesus. And he's saying, you feel burdened? You have problems? Well, come to me. Now, naturally, the question we've got to ask is, is Jesus up to it? To be able to have all the world's problems? It's a massive claim. How do I know that I can trust Jesus with the weight of the world? How do I know I can trust Jesus with my problems? We've all got our problems, haven't we? We've all got our burdens and our loads, and sometimes they seem too much for us to bear, don't they? So your conscience, it feels guilty. Your heart, like mine, it gets bowed down with a sense of shame and failure. And that's a great thing that you're watching today because this promise is for you. Jesus says in verse 28, come to me. How do you know you can do that? Well, come back with me to verse 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little babies. The whole passage is full of paradoxes. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Doesn't sound very humble, that, does it? Think about what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, nobody knows anything about God except me. That doesn't sound very humble. That's what he's saying, though. Nobody knows anything about God except me and those I chose to reveal him to. And that is a huge paradox. How does that square with being humble and gentle in heart? C.S. Lewis wrote this. Jesus is worse than Hitler or Stalin. He is a megalomaniac of the first order, if this isn't true. The whole world belongs to me. The Father has put everything to me, and no one can know God unless I reveal God to them. 
So Muhammad doesn't know anything about God. Buddha doesn't know anything about God. Nobody knows about God except me. That is what Jesus is saying, isn't it? They're Jesus' words, not mine. And the only way anyone can know anything about God is if I decide to share him, to reveal him. That is what he's saying, isn't it? It doesn't sound very humble. It sounds outrageous. C.S. Lewis said, if you ask Buddha, are you the son of Rama? He would have said, you are still in the veil of illusion. If you asked Socrates, are you Zeus, he would have laughed at you. If you asked Muhammad, are you Allah, he would have beheaded you for blasphemy. But here is Jesus saying, well, look what he says in verse 27. No one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. That is an outrageous thing to say. And it is an absolute and exclusive claim. So the only way that you can possibly know God is to come to Jesus. And if you haven't come to Jesus, you don't know God according to Jesus and that is the claim he's making if I can put it like this Jesus didn't put himself in in the public domain he hides himself from the wise and learned in in verse 25 he reveals himself to babies doesn't he you can't put God in a test tube and discover him there God can only be known in Jesus and those to whom Jesus makes himself known A schoolgirl once wrote to the Anglican Information Office and said, we're doing God this term. Please send all the leaflets and pamphlets you have about him. Well, you you can't learn about God that way. You can't know God by just studying theology. God will only allow himself to be known in Jesus. And it is an absolute and exclusive claim, but it's universal. He says, come to me, all of you, all of you who are weary and burdened, And you can't cope in this fallen world because you're rebels against God. Come to me, all of you, and you'll find rest. So God is not an object of inquiry. He's somebody who invites you in Christ. Do you see the only way that you can come to know God is through Christ? It's about a relationship, isn't it, with God? Have you noticed that the words that are used in these verses, father, son, babies, they're family words. Jesus is saying to you, come into the family. It's not a philosophy that you need, it's a family that you need. And the only way that you can come to know him is through me. It's a huge paradox. I'm gentle, I'm humble, I'm meek, I'm mild, but I'm the only way you'll ever know God. I'm the one to whom God has committed everything. I'm the only one who can lift your load. So come to me and I will give you rest. So the first thing you've got to understand about this invitation is it's coming from the master of the universe who loves you so much that he's taken human form and he's gone to the cross so that he can take the whole load of your sin and put it on your shoulders. The Lord of all has become the servant of all. He's made himself known. So our job as Christians surely is to make Jesus known. Our job as people who've come come to understand the gospel is to know Jesus and to make him known. The second paradox The master who is slave calls you to the work which is rest. He calls you to the work which is rest. Who is this invitation from? Well, it's from the master who is slave. What is it to? What is it about? It's about work which is rest. So he talks about a yoke. A yoke is a farming implement. It's how they plowed fields. They carried a cart. The the stronger animal would... uh, lift the load for the younger animal and he would guide the way for the less experienced animal and Jesus is saying if you come to me that is what it's going to be like coming under my yoke coming under my control coming under my sway and my direction and my leadership and maybe if you're honest today that's the reason why you're not a Christian it's not because you don't think it's true and it's not because if you you don't think that it's relevant if you know anything about Christianity you'll know that it's relevant You'll know that there's nothing more relevant than to know the person who is gentle and humble in heart. But the problem is it's too hard, isn't it? Gandhi said, I'd I'd become a Christian if I could find one. He admired Jesus Christ and his teaching, but he thought that Jesus set the bar too high. And maybe you're watching today, and it's not that you don't believe it's true, and it's not that you don't believe it's irrelevant, but you, you think I'll never be able to keep it up. And what Jesus asks is impossible. He asks asks us to love our enemies, to forgive one another, to live with him as Lord. And when you become a Christian, your life is not your own anymore. 
You're under Christ's yoke and he can direct where you're going. And whatever calls he makes on my life, whatever direction he wants me to take, whatever demands he makes upon me, well, he is Lord. And we think it's too hard, isn't it? But just see what it says. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's a quote about the Puritans, about Jesus' yoke. And it's this, it is no more burdensome than wings are to a bird or a wedding ring is to a bride. That's what he says the Christian life is like. It's no more burdensome than wings are to a bird than a ring is to a bride. Being a Christian, it means that we're no longer our own. It means that Jesus calls the shots. But it's not wearisome. So imagine a bird flying over your house now and flapping its wings. Whew, these wings. It would never do it, would it? That's not how bird, birds operate. Birds don't see their wings as a heavy burden to bear. Imagine a, a new bride was, was coming out of church today and she was weighed down. I said, why are you weighed down? She said, oh, this ring, this ring. And yet so many Christians go around, don't they, with faces dragging around on the ground. People say it's hard to be a Christian, but actually it's such a privilege, isn't it, to be a Christian? Take my yoke upon you, Jesus says. Learn of me, you'll find that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now the third thing, who is this invitation for? It's from the master who is slave. It's inviting you to the work, which is rest, and it's for losers who win. Losers who win. I don't know whether you, you like those magazines where they show you celebrities, they show you the movers and shakers of their society, and everybody loves to be seen with a winner, don't they? But Jesus mixes with losers, like you and me. He says, come to me, all you who struggle. Come to me, all you who haven't got your act together. You can't do what God wants you to do. You fail him over and over again, and Jesus says, come to me and I'll give you rest. Come under my yoke and I'll help you shoulder the load. Come to me. Jesus identifies that, doesn't he, with little babies in verse 25 and 26. He says there's the wise and the learned and there's the little babies. Who would you rather be with? Somebody who knows a little bit about something? Well, they would make it for an interesting dinner party. Or do you want to be on the kids' table? I doubt it. What does he mean by that? What does he mean about... about Revealing it to babies. Does he mean it's kind of anti-intellectual, that you turn off your brain? No, of course not. It's not what Jesus is talking about. What he's saying is this. If you are wise in your own sight, and you're so self-sufficient that you look down your nose at these poor Christians who need this crutch to lean on, well, this invitation, it's not for you. Jesus has got some other things to say to you, and they're not very nice at all. They're not very comfortable. Someone was telling me that they'd been in a maze. I'm not sure where it was, uh, but it was a maze and there was an exit in it with a sign on it which said, for the elderly and disabled and those who've given up. And what they didn't know is that that was the only way out of the maze. And the only alternative was to keep going round and round and round until you got the message that the only way out of the maze was to admit that you were disabled and elderly. And the only way to get out was to give up. The only way to get off the treadmill of life, the only way to enter into that rest which we all long for, which Jesus offers, is to have God's presence in our lives. And the only way to enter into that rest is to admit that you haven't got your life together. The Lord of all has become the servant of all. The one who flung the stars into space has become the burden bearer for your sin and my sin he's shouldered the weight of human sin and rebellion and he's put it on his shoulders will you come to him if you've not come to him before will you come back to him today you know it's true you know that it's relevant perhaps you thought it was too hard but you don't have to do it on your own Will you come to him? It's an invitation from Jesus. And it's one of those invitations that has got four letters at the end. R-S-V-P. You've got to respond. Come to me, Jesus says, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 
take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light.'" 